Well, hello, welcome to the Exeter webinar. Please note that all registrants will receive a printout of the slides and a link to a recording of this webinar, which means you do not have to take detailed notes and you don't have to do screen captures unless you want to. <laughs> Our webinar today will be on the FMEDA method and using the FMEDX tool to predict electronic design failures, failure rates, and failure modes and other things per functional safety standards. My name is Bill Goebel. I've spent a lot of my professional career starting by in new product development, where I did microcomputer design, even analog design, software and hardware development and engineering project management. In more recent years, I do probabilistic analysis. I've studied a lot of failure rate data and I've done a lot of OEM certification work. I work for Exeter. Exeter was founded in 1999. And look at that, look at that, 1999. You know, we're only a few months away from our uh, 20 year anniversary. And I think that's gonna be quite exciting. Exeter does functional safety, alarm management, and uh, industrial control system cybersecurity. <clears throat> Exeter has three business units. One group does engineering tools. Another group does certification and assessment. And a third group does system lifecycle services. And I, I do believe these, uh, these groups all fit together pretty nicely uh, and they're quite synergistic. The certification group, for example, has started uh, very strong global programs in both functional safety and in cybersecurity. The certification group is fully accredited per ANSI, the United States IEC liaison organization, uh, in both functional safety and cybersecurity. And you know, since we started, I'm, I'm really quite pleased um, that we have achieved global leadership in both functional safety and uh, cybersecurity device certifications. Even in the logic solver category, where the very first certifications were done in 1982 by TUV product service, Exeter has become the leader in that area as well. Now, I'd just like to note that the project engineer for that very first certification in 1982 is one of the co-founders of Exeter. So I like to claim our experience goes all the way back to the very first certification, although Exeter didn't exist back then. I didn't really like that chart though, because I kept people kept getting confused. They said, you're not the, log, the leader in logic solver. So in, 19, or in 2018, we had it updated uh, to separate the different competitors. Uh, a lot of people think TUV is one company, but um, in fact, it's, it's, there are many different TUVs. Three of them are very active in the uh, automation system certification market. It's, it, we're very pleased with what we've accomplished so far, and we intend to keep growing our market space. Our engineering tools group created a suite of tools way back from the very early days of Exeter for systems level functional safety analysis work. Those tools have grown into an entire suite called Excellentia, and SILSTAT, Excellentia is a project lifecycle tool that goes all the way through process hazards analysis, uh, through design, through verification, through requirements, proof test generation, and finally data, field failure data collection. We also have a set of, of tools for OEMs, those people who are doing new product 
development. And it consists of a set of two tools, right, called ArcX, which is a suite of different kinds of tools, and FMEDAX, which we'll be using in our examples today. I imagine many of you are doing new product development work right now. And you're dealing with new generation microcomputers, large scale integrated circuits, field programmable gate arrays, software, and probably you're now trying to deal with the cybersecurity threats, things we never had to even think, think about years ago. It's very challenging, new product development. And one of the big challenges is, of course, meeting budget and meeting schedule. I have a lot of horror stories about the projects I worked on, but we won't have time to go through to any of those today. One thing is very obvious, that you can improve design quality and reduce rework, which improves your schedule and your budget by finding problems early in the development. Imagine the cost of discovering a problem after production release where you have thousands of, of widgets out in the field. It's so much better if you can find them during design time, and certainly you want to find them before production release. So how do we do that? Well, many of us spend all of our energy in new product development on the creation of this new wonderful design by thinking about how will we make this work? And of course, production cost, et cetera, et cetera. But very few of us, and I'll speak for myself when I was involved, we give little thought to how the components fail and the impact of those failures. But that in fact is absolutely a way to find problems early in the design process. The quality engineers and, and project management people work very hard to reduce project schedule and cost. And the key concept seems to be the creation of a defined engineering process with error checking at every step. The objective, of course, is to define the process. What are you going to do? What sequence are you going to do it in? And what error checking are you going to do for every box, every step in the process? Well, engineering tools were absolutely created by many different companies to help us achieve those goals, find errors early in the design process. For example, many techniques have been developed over the decades to find these problems. One of the earliest that I learned about was a failure mode and effect analysis. I read History of Reliability Engineering, which indicated that was created in the 1960s as part of a uh, government program. And it has grown to become so common that it's used on almost every project. Why? Because it works. And a failure mode effect analysis is done at a system level, at a, a subsystem level, or even at a component level to find different kinds of problems. There's a software, uh, there's a software method that's analogous called the software FMEA, sometimes called software HAZOP, and newer techniques called cybersecurity threat analysis are very comparable. And engineering tools exist for these different tasks. For critical systems like automatic protection systems, latent design problems can absolutely be catastrophic. Therefore, it's really important that problem detection tasks are used in these critical systems. 
Exeter produces two OEM engineering tools, ArcX and FMEDAX. ArcX is a life cycle tool with a number of different um, problem detection uh, methods built in with expert knowledge and documentation tools to help make sure that problems are detected and followed up on. It doesn't do you any good to detect the problem if you don't fix it. <clears throat> Hope that's obvious. Anyway, the second tool is called FMEDAX, and that is an FMEDA evaluation tool, which we will talk about uh, most of our time uh, today. ArcX is an integrated microcomputer architecture analysis tool, typically done at a system or subsystem level, designed to find problems and achieve both functional safety and cybersecurity certification. It's got intelligent FMEA support, FMEA's HAZOP support for software, full support for field programmable gate arrays and custom ASICs, as well as uh, normal hardware and software. We're not going to talk too much about it today, but it is related to FMEDAX because during architecture analysis, you typically identify the failure, the functional failure modes of each block in a system which translates directly to the functional failure modes we need to know about when doing an FMEDA. The ArcX also identifies the planned automatic diagnostics and other mitigation methods, which we need to know about when we're doing an FMEDA. When you're done with all of this, um, architecture analysis. You have a, a complete detailed chart of your design, the different function blocks that are in that design, the failure modes, the functional failure modes of each block, and the automatic diagnostics that are planned for the design. Now, the ArcX tool then, or, or any architecture tool, you typically want it to export the functional failure modes called deviations and the automatic diagnostics and quote mitigation measures so that you can use them when you and 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 tie them into your failure mode effect and diagnostic analysis and that not automatic importing obviously saves engineering time and eliminates transcription errors now when the block diagrams of an architecture are further decomposed and a detailed hardware design is completed, at least a schematic, or at least a schematic of a, the, the subsystem that you want to analyze, then you can do an FMEDA. And remember, the FMEDA is intended to find design problems that can be avoided if we understand what happens when the component fails. Obviously, we have to look at each component and each failure mode of each component and consider the impact of all the automatic diagnostics planned for a device. Now, it can be a very, it's very systematic process and it's very detailed, but like FMEA, it has become quite common because it works. You really find problems. Now, so what, what's, why, why an FMEDA? What's wrong with just an FMEA? Um, in fact, the FMEA can be done even at a component level. It can even be done by looking at each component and each failure mode of each component and creating a, a qualitative or a semi-quantitative um, result if you're using FMCA, FMECA, failure mode effect and criticality analysis. But to meet functional safety standards, a detailed qualitative anal quantitative analysis is done that generates 
failure rates and failure mode predictions for any given new design. Oh boy, how do we do a failure rate and failure mode prediction? Well, an old and common approach for failure rate is Mill Handbook 217. Now, the basic fundamental principles of reliability engineering tell us that in a series system, the failure rate of the system is the sum of the failure rate of the components. Now, that's a concept used in Mill Handbook 217, which has been around for many decades. And it has two methods built in. I mean, it describes two methods. A parts count method, where you simply add up failure rates for all the parts from data tables. And it has a parts stress method, where formulas are provided to adjust the failure rates to a given environmental uh, operating profile. The parts stress method is, is claimed to be more accurate, and uh, I would agree. I think it certainly has far more potential. And so it's become pretty commonly used over decades. And many people, although many people are still using this method today. The FMEDA is, goes beyond that. The method was created by engineers at Exeter by combining the parts stress methodology with a failure mode effect and analysis and adding in diagnostic analysis and failure mode analysis. So it's kind of like using a combination of already developed well-known techniques with a few very important uh, additions. You must look at all the components in a design and they are chosen and the application stress conditions are chosen. Failure rate and failure mode distributions are then provided from a database and diagnostic methods are chosen if applicable, if there aren't any automatic diagnostics. And you can, you can take into account the effectiveness of those diagnostics. Lastly, you can even, if, if you're operating in a low demand mode where you can have a manual proof test or in effect more than one type of diagnostic, you can predict the actual effectiveness of that particular proof test design. The FMEDA method was specifically created to help practically comply with functional safety standards. The FMEDX tool uses functional failure modes, translates component failures into functional failures of each circuit block. Those are then translated into failure modes at the device level, subsystem or system level, depending on the scope of the analysis. FMEDAX uses embedded component data, but allows you to create your own components for people who have something that's, uh, you want to create your own list to match up to your company uh, parts, uh, your company authorized parts list, things of that nature. FMEDAX can analyze subsystems and allows you to reuse subsystem analysis, which is pretty cool because if you're using the same circuit over and over again, you only analyze it once. That's neat. You can change the operational profiles for different environments and it'll automatically up to update the results. You can gen it generates an Excel spreadsheet file for sharing your results with others. It's got built-in calculations and rules based on the safety standards. And I think most importantly, the uh, integrated component data viewer is available. So you can look at different failure rates and different failure modes of the parts before you even use them. Now, how does this work? I'm going to give you like a PowerPoint uh, demonstration, which actually is a little bit faster, but I think even uh, generates or gets the message across faster as well.
Let's say we choose a microcomputer architecture with a number of circuit blocks, including input channels, multiplexers, a common processor block, a power supply subsystem, output channels, and an internet interface. We can identify each unit, each one of these blocks, and go through the uh, FMEDA for each block. Let's start with the power supply subsystem as an example, and we'll look at the decomposed design, which goes down one level deeper, and you can see the different function blocks that are part of that design. And let's focus on the 3.3 volt uh, power regulator, and we pull out the schematic diagram for that particular circuit. Looks pretty simple. Yeah, I can. I, th I think we can. We can get this job done. All right. The first thing we do in an FMEDAX is is open the file, and you'll see the default version of the database. You can change it if you wish. You'll see the current FMEDA file name. Pick a new one if you wish. And let's get right to work on the switching regulator. The first thing I want to do is enter the U1 switching regulator. The quickest way to do that in Excellentia is to type switching into the component filter, and it will automatically recognize that you're looking for a switching regulator. It will list all the components that have that word in the name of the component. I like it because it saves me time. Next, we need to figure out what the application stress levels will be. So we look at the component use category from the pull down list, and we have two choices, low power or moderate power. And there is a definition, 50% of the rated power or less. And we're gonna select that because in this case, um, there isn't an external pad device for heat sinking. And we hit this and the component goes right in to the database as soon as we pick moderate power. So we know U1 has been entered. We know the subsystem function. We know the quantity and we know the FMEDA subsystem. The failure modes are also listed for the component at the bottom of the screen. And now we enter the functional failure mode that corresponds to each component failure mode. When those are entered, we can add the component to the FMEDA by pressing the button. And the first four lines of the FMEDA are completed. I like it because it saves me time. If I want to look at the results of the FMEDA so far, I can hit the button for view results and I can see overall FMEDA results so far. You don't have to do that. You can just check and see where you are and it gives you an idea of exactly what's going on as you move forward. The Various metrics for any given safety standard are calculated and displayed as you go. Uh, this particular display shows the results for 61508. Uh, the ISO 26262 uses a completely different set of failure mode definitions. And so the screen for automotive will look different uh, at the bottom. Uh, actually, this whole the whole results screen will look quite different. So don't be confused if you don't see the the single point, the detected dual point, uh, the latent fault, and all the all the definitions from two six two six two. And then you just keep adding components till you're done. Now a lot of people, it's very systematic. Some people consider it um, boring, but at least the FMEDA tool saves a lot of the boring work and makes it a lot easier for you. Now, the FMEDA methodology suffers from a potential flaw, the component database. We all know the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. 
if you're using the wrong component database or the wrong stress factors, your FMEDA will not will not predict accurate results depending on the magnitude magnitude of the problem. Now, if this component database is so important, where does this come from? There are many component databases, uh, general component databases available. Uh, there's a whole lot more than the four listed in these tables. But when we first started this, what we discovered was all the components we needed were not there. The failure modes were only included to a limited extent in 62380. Oper there were no standard operating profiles. And it didn't feel as if there was a good database applicable to industrial automation and protection systems. But the IEC 62380 was the best we had back then. So we started with that. That wasn't good enough, of course. So we started a program. I call it the calibrated FMEDA database because what we really wanted to do is make sure that the FMEDA predictions matched field failure data. In other words, are we doing a good job? Is this realistic? So what we do is we started taking FMEDA output, total failure rate, and compared it to field failure data that we got from a number of software sources and manufacturers data. And we even looked at the published data from the ARETA database, which is very high quality. And we compared. Now, what happens when FMEDA results do not match field failure results? You have to dig in and find out why. Often that meant updating the formulas, adding parameters, and adjusting the factors from the six, um, 62380 uh, standard. Sometimes we discovered parts were used in a completely different application than, than we imagined, and we'd have to create brand new parts. And of course, new technology is coming up every month. So we constantly had to create new parts which go into the component failure rate database. Now this is a closed loop system and we update and create and update and create over and over again. And after hundreds of updates and comparisons, we think we're in finally in really pretty good shape and I'm not going to get into that right now, although it would be fun, because we have entire webinars on that subject and several white papers on the Exeter website. So you can go look at those if you're interested. Overall, this component database that we use with the FMEDAX tool includes electronic components, mechanical components, and sensor type components. We keep the database up to date by modifying the 62380 formulas that we use with added parameters and, and uh, uh, scaling factors. At this point, we've gathered over 350 billion unit operating hours of field failure data in multiple applications. And um, it, it makes it easy, easier. It's a lot of work. Hundreds of man hours have gone into this, but we think we have uh, a pretty good component database, which means we think we have pretty good failure rate predictions for the operating environments that we have specified. Over time, we've added a lot of components, especially new technology. 
and, and the new technology that that's really become important now is the um, the small geometry integrated circuits um, devices that have less than 50 nanometer gate uh, geometries because the failure rates and failure modes of these parts are completely different than the older parts they used to be stuff like not uh, not nanometers but maybe uh, much larger numbers uh, i don't even remember now it's so old but we finally have a lot more mechanical parts and a lot more electrical parts and we did it all by looking at field failure data in this closed loop system we now have six operating profiles for normal uh, automation systems and two operating profiles for transportation systems. Each component has multiple application stress parameters and multiple operational profiles. And you can see in this sheet from the um, printout, this is a set of data for a signal, an optocoupler signal isolator. And the failure rate goes from, uh, what's the lowest number on there? I see a 2.6 up to 42. That's 42 fits. It makes a big difference what the operating profile is and the application stress conditions. And the data is here to cover those. And the failure modes are down below and even the failure modes change as a function of operating profile. As another example, here's a single operational amplifier. And you can see the failure rate on that varies from what, seven or 4.6 up to 18 as a function of use profile or usage, application stress and operational profile. Now, what is this operational profile? Well, it's a set of environmental variables. And, and we've talked about automation systems and, and cabinet mounted equipment sees very different environment than low power equipment in the field, which sees very different environmental conditions than general products in the field. And we have operational profiles for sub C offshore and process wetted equipment, although that right now that primarily applies to, to valve and so forth. Um, I saw a question pop up. Let me just stop for a second. Can one get a view of the components whose failure rate data is in the database? Yes, the, fail, the, um, the FMEDA X tool has the component viewer which shows you screens that look, well, actually there's one coming up. I'll show you in a moment. Cause it's right here. If you use the database viewer in the tool, you will see the various application modes and the environmental profiles for both industrial control equipment and transportation equipment. They're in two separate, um, Right now, automation equipment uh, and transportation equipment is in two different uh, spread, uh, two different sheets. You can look at the failure modes down at the bottom. You can look at the failure mode splits. Everything you need for an FMEDA is here, and the reason it's here is because we were doing it. We had to do FMEDAs. And um, you need all this information, and a lot of it is not in any other standard. The FMEDA tool is not necessarily, the whole FMEDA process is not necessarily obvious. In my opinion, it takes, you have to learn it. And there's there definitely a bit of a learning curve here. So FMEDA tools from Exeter are provided with introductory online training, 
phone support and options for complete customized training as required. At the very bottom of the screen is an important statement. The FMEDA X tool database is updated one or more times per year with new components, new failure modes, failure mode distribution, useful life limits, etc. We just went through a long and detailed study about useful life of some of these new uh, small geometry components. And we get a lot of information from semiconductor companies who were advising us that uh, uh, the products made for your cell phone aren't necessarily designed to last 50 years. <clears throat> and I don't care in my cell phone. But, and I don't know that I really care in my automobile, although quite frankly, I do have an automobile that's over 50 years old. Uh, but uh, uh, thank goodness for me, it doesn't have any electronics. <clears throat> but industrial automation equipment may very well be installed for 20, 30, 40 years. And you really have to be careful when choosing components uh, for those applications. The FMEDAX tool gives you that information and we update that information with the very latest information that primarily comes from semiconductor companies. I got a question. How do you decide diagnostic coverage? Well, basically, the FMEDA tool has a database of diagnostic techniques and the expected diagnostic coverage factors for, uh, for well-known diagnostic techniques, um, like different kinds of memory tests, ECC, uh, all kinds of different techniques, and that's all built into the tool. It's primarily based on the diagnostic coverage factors from IEC 61508, which we use as guidance. All right, I don't see any more questions for now. Let's keep going. Happy to answer all the questions you might have. Now, I did want to tell you that the licensing for ARCX uh, comes with the, the basic package, has the basic knowledge base, and comes with a one-year operational lease. There are optional databases for cybersecurity, automotive-dependent failure analysis, and FPGAs and ASICs. Uh, we can handle VHDL. Uh, we can handle uh, other programming languages it's, it, with specific suggested failure modes as a function of the hardware and software functionality. It's pretty cool. Well, yeah, it was created to save time when we were doing our own work. So it's, I hope it's pretty obvious that... Uh, we want to save everybody time because we want people to get their products certified. The FMEDA comes in five different versions, depending on which databases you want. You can get, there's no reason to pay for the more than you want. Electrical, electrical sensor, mechanical, automotive, or you can buy it all in one big package, but it costs a lot more, of course. It does come with a one year operational lease and all database updates, and the yearly maintenance fee covers updates on the program, and perhaps even far more importantly, the yearly database updates. Uh, lastly, I suppose I shouldn't tell you this, but I really think you gotta have training. Now you can go for it yourself, especially if you're a very experienced reliability engineer. Uh, FME, CA experience is also quite valuable. You can use the tool in any way you want, but um, we have training courses on FMEA and HAZOP design analysis. We have a special course on cybersecurity threat 
analysis using ARCX, which we think is uh, becoming more and more a point, uh, more and more important as time goes on. I have some stories there, but we don't have time to tell those either. FPGA and ASIC design analysis is a bit of a specialty field, and there is a database built into ARCX to cover that. We have public courses available for electronic FMEDA work and mechanical FMEDA work. And lastly, we have a full-blown, what we call, hands-on training. And I kind of like it because it really helps you from, keeps you from, it helps you to learn fast and it helps you from making mistakes. We take a design, your design, and we do a partial FMEDA for the design. Then we teach you exactly what we've done using your design as the example. And then after the first session, you have a homework assignment. <laughs> go finish the FMEDA and you're given a certain amount of time and then you come back and we go through it again. Say, okay, we've studied what you've done, that you did this right, you made a mistake here and we finish the FMEDA with your design example. One of the reasons I like it is because over time, we've been giving this particular course for many years now and over time we found it's just, the best way to, to, to get up to speed rapidly. I also wanted to mention that if you don't want to use these tools, if you think architecture analysis and FMEDA work is really boring, or you're really hurting for engineering hours, Exeter can do this for you. Um, some people really like us to do the work. Some people like us to do the first one or two, and then they take over. We're happy to work with you any way you want. Now, some more questions came up. What are other tools available in the market for, let me, let me see if I can move this out. There we go. For FMEDA purposes. Um, I did an internet search on FMEDA tools and I only found one other one. Uh, and the company name was Medina. And uh, I don't know anything about it and I've not used it. So I recommend you do your own FMEDA tool search and investigate as much as you want. Does Exeter provide a program for determining maintenance interval of valves? Oh, very good, 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 good question. Yes, well, that's at the systems level. Valve uh, proof testing uh, is, is a whole different subject, and we have a couple of really good webinars on that. But we can provide you estimates for when you need to do inspection and proof testing as a function of your particular risk reduction factor for any given safety function that uses a valve. That we can do. If you'd like to learn a little bit more, please feel free to look at the recorded web seminars on the Exeter website, they're all free. The white papers describing this stuff in very good detail are available free of charge on the Exeter website. And we have a lot of them about failure rate analysis. There's a whole paper on how we developed the FMEDA tool over many years. Of course, one of the reasons we're selling it is even our competitors buy our tool because we put a lot of man hours into it and I think it'd be tough to generate a component database like we did. Doesn't mean somebody might, but right now uh, we charge per cost, not, not per value. So yeah, I hope it's a, you think it's a really good deal. Has Exeter done any ISO 262 certifications? And the answer is yes. 
Uh, although I will say in the automotive or um, even, well, top tier, second tier, third tier manufacturers tend to want an assessment, but don't really care very much about whether they get a certification or not. I have seen that change in some areas of the world where the certifications are, are now being required. And Exeter has done several, uh, 26262. Um, to my knowledge, most of them are published on the safety automation equipment, or safety automation uh, element list on the Exeter website, the SAEL although they're not all there because some of the manufacturers um, did not give us permission to post, to post the certificates. Uh, so you can find uh, some of them on the Exeter website under the uh, SAEL page. Thanks for the question. They were all pretty good. Let me just double check, see if I missed anything. All right. I'd like to tell you all thank you. Thank you for attending. I hope your time was well spent. We appreciate any comments you have on this webinar, on the Exeter webinar programs, and we appreciate all suggestions of how we can do a better job serving you. I'll pause just for one more moment, see if there are any questions coming up. I don't see any, so what I can say right now is I've used up about 45 minutes of your time. Thank you for that. Stay tuned and watch out for more Exeter Web Seminars. Have a good day and goodbye.